Well, I'm headed out to the ranch to build an elevated stand for my beehives. I got the hives back there in the back of the truck. I'm going to set it up and test it all out, make sure everything fits together well so that when my bees arrive April 6th, I'll be all ready for them and have the hives ready to put together. So in order to discourage skunks and raccoons from trying to get into my beehives, I'm going to build an elevated stand that will set the hives about two feet off the ground. I'll start out with four pieces of eight foot long two by sixes that are treated so I don't have to paint them. I'll cut uh, one of those into four two foot long pieces and those will become the four legs. And then I'll cut another one into four pieces and those four pieces will be the crossbars. Then I'll use the last two of the eight foot long pieces to form the other long sides of the box. Now my first little bee metropolis is only going to have two hives, one at each end of this elevated stand. So. I've measured off the exact width of the hive and I've mounted a little floor joist hanger on each of the long beams so I can just slip one of these two foot sections in there. It's actually a little bit different than exact, not exactly two feet long. You'll just have to measure it when you put it all together. And this way uh, I can accommodate the two hives. This is a bottom board, a, a real nice fancy bottom board that I bought. It's made of treated wood and it's got a back smoker hole in the back side. It's also got a back entrance that allows you to pull out the Varroa mite integrated pest management board, sticky board, and that's underneath a metal mesh screen. Here's what the hive will look like when it's fully assembled. You've got the bottom board on the bottom and then you've got several hive bodies. Uh, here's the top cover with the inner cover that's used for ventilation and just below that I've got a feeder box that will be filled with sugar water. And when I put the hive all together I'll strap it down with the ratchet so that it can't be knocked over accidentally by some animal or by the wind. I'm in northeast Texas so I don't have to worry too much about snow uh, or icy cold wind, but I do want to position the hives with a northern tree line so that it keeps the really cold wind off of them and with the southern exposure toward the entrances. So I've located a relatively flat spot with some grass with a southern exposure and I'll set the hive out here close enough to my cabin you can see in the background there that I can get water and electricity out there as well as maybe a webcam so I can show some video. I'm going to put a small fence around it mostly just to keep the casual deer from stumbling into the hives knocking it over. Of course the raccoons and skunks will if they're really determined they'll be able to get through the fence but this will just be a way to make it a little bit more difficult for them. that I'm working in right now is the back side of the hives and you'll notice that I'm actually expanding the area back there. That's because I plan to approach the hives from the back when at all possible. Uh, bees don't like to have big strangers running around at the front entrance and so working from behind the hives will keep them a lot calmer and annoy them less. The 
defense material itself is uh, four foot high poultry wire. Uh, any determined animal will be able to dig underneath it or climb over the top of it, but I'll be putting some other stuff out that will uh, discourage them, maybe some cinnamon, and it's just mainly a way to keep casual animals from getting in there and messing with the hives while I'm not there. Be sure to keep visiting our website, metropolisofpropolis.com, where you'll find more information about my beekeeping activities, as well as some plans for this elevated stand and other things.